Hi everyone, I'm Sue from SueBrook.com and DiscoverYourIBooks.com. So excited to see you today. I'm excited we got Deborah removing her. <laughs> 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 um, we're going to talk about um, the Discover Your I Book series, specifically uh, how to become a published author. And Deborah is one of the authors in our first book, which we're super excited we just came out with, which is Discover Your Identity. And we had a blab last night with Scott Transu, um, Joe Datara, Susan Shepard, and Karen Strauss, and it was a great blab. We all got to talk about our stories, but Deborah wasn't there. So why don't you tell us, Deborah, a little bit about your story and why you decided to be in the book? Well, the story was about getting back into the game. The metaphor for my company, my coach Deborah, is get off the sidelines and into the game. And the inspiration behind my story was having been an employee in a public school setting and having been bullied and harassed by my superior or my direct report and having had, you know, years of a stellar career and having been very successful and enjoying my work, you know, fully, all of a sudden I found myself in a situation, number one, that I couldn't believe I was in, and number two, that I didn't survive in very well. But the, the blessing in it and the outcome was actually, again, really discovering who I was all over again and having to start over. I mean, in a sense, it felt like starting over, but really it wasn't. It was just really coming to, to grips with who I truly was and having the confidence to be able to step out of that environment and move forward. And, and start my own company and, and doing what I really, really enjoy. And I think that it's so, what you're doing is so important for us to get our stories out there. You know, we hear all the great stories and the inspirations from, you know, the famous people and, and people that are common everyday kinds of names. But I think there's so much inspiration that we get from people that we know or j just what we might call everyday people. And those, is, those stories can be so much more inspiring, I think, sometimes because we maybe might feel a, a deeper sense of connection in that way. So that's oh, yeah. so important for me to want to contribute to this book and this series. Oh, yeah. You know, last night I was t saying that um, one of the big reasons that I started, I, I had the idea to do this book with different authors rather than me just writing my own story was I had met this girl, I don't know, several years ago and she was in a wheelchair and she um, had been paralyzed. She, I think she'd been a big athlete and she had this great life and she was in a skiing accident, I believe, and ended up in a wheelchair paralyzed. And she had written this book and I thought, wow, how amazing. And it's so compelling. And the story was so great. And then, um, I started telling my little story about, um, well, my story about giving up my life for a musician husband and losing my identity and then being in a car accident, right. which I'm still just fine. I'm not paralyzed or anything, but I, just the story of divorce, the story of in a car accident and then rediscovering myself. Actually, that story connected with people a lot more than her story about being paralyzed because people can't really connect with someone who yes. has had that big of a tragedy. There's way more people in the world like you and I that have gone through divorce and have gone through yes. crappy things in our lives and they, and uh, we've come out of it and we're, we're working, we're still working on it like everybody is, but um, right. yeah, exactly. I love that you said that because it's true and uh, people really connect with it and people are starting to really love the book and reading everybody's stories because they see themselves in us yes yeah. yeah it it makes it so real and i think you know even the the world renowned people they all started with a story and many of those stories aren't any different from yours and mine and so many others that we know it's just that you know they took that story and they shared their message and got it out there and people can connect with that and that's a pretty amazing and inspiring thing it is. It's and, and um. So I, it was fun to talk to the other authors too. I, went, I was wondering how did it make you feel to actually when you started writing the story? Did it do anything for you personally to get that out and then actually put it out in public for yeah. people to hear? You know, it's an interesting question because I've been removed from that environment now for about a year and a half, and you think that you've let go of the story. In fact, I know that I quit sharing the story to some extent. It was, it was so much a part of me. So every time I met someone, that was my story. And then I realized I needed to change my story. It was being more harmful to me than to anybody. 
So I changed wow. my story and even dropped the story, but it's still, it's an important message in terms of, you know, the, I think the bullying harassment rate um, for workers is that, uh, 35% of all workers report that they've been bullied or harassed, which is mm -hmm. to me extremely high. And, Absolutely. and for me too, my, I think among women, women to women being bullied is at 80%. That's extremely high. And that's what had happened wow. in my situation. And so, so the message was important. I thought that I had left the story and had moved beyond. And in many ways I had, you know, I felt happy again and I was being successful doing other things and had, you know, it just felt good to be out of that environment. I felt healthy again. But then when you go to write the story, <laughs> as a, you know, it brought some of that emotion up again and the anger and the wow. resentment and why did this happen? And yet I still felt a little lighter, much, much lighter. So I, I knew that I was in a different place than where I had been, but it, it's okay for us to connect with that. I think our messages are important in reconnecting what is what I don't want to do any longer. And what a, a coach and I were sharing the other day is putting it at like it's a big rock in a backpack and then putting it on my back again and mm -hmm. not doing that. So just my being aware of that. Am I, am I telling this story? And is it sharing a message that's important for others? Or is it a big rock in the backpack that I'm choosing to carry again? So that, that's that been really helpful for me. But yeah, it brought up some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hopefully it was healing. You know, I always believe that the worst things that could ever happen is usually it turns out to be the best things that can happen because you either learn something from it that you're never going to do it again or right. you're going to be able to teach someone else right. um, something from it and you're going to save somebody, which is also okay. really so you know what's really interesting too is for people that don't know the story obviously you and i knew each other decades ago in yes. our <laughs> environment you know back in the early 80s and had your situation not occurred and mine had not happened i mean part of my becoming a, a part of craig deswalt's rockstar marketing and mastermind program was wanting to rebrand and re-energize my coaching business. And wow. had it not been for what had happened to me and getting myself out of that environment and doing what I want to do, I would not have become a part of that. And you and I would not have met again. No, so it's, you know, it's, there, there are no accidents. <laughs> uh, exactly. So we know each other. I mean, we get to meet up again because of what had happened to both of us, you know. Exactly. You know, um, for those of you who don't know, our story is uh, Deborah and I are in the Rockstar Marketing uh, Mastermind with Craig Deswalt. If you want to check him out, it's craigdeswalt.com. And we're in a, a mastermind program together. So we're uh, rediscovering our identities and building our businesses. So one day, uh, she lives, Deborah's in Chicago and I'm in Southern California, um, but we're both from Nebraska. And when you're, if you're from Nebraska, if you're from a go small- Go Huskers. Oh, oh yeah, go Big Red. <laughs> you know, and, and Nebraska is pretty funny because you, if you meet someone from Nebraska, it's so exciting. It's like, yes. you're probably either related to them <laughs> or, you, or you know someone that knows someone or you met them or whatever. I mean, you, it, everything is really familiar there, especially the Huskers. So anyway, oh yay, Susan's on. Um, so anyway, we started talking and long story short, she heard me talking about the college I attended, which was Carney State College at the time. Now it's part of the university. And she said, oh my gosh, I taught there and a, a bunch of circumstances happened and we I found my yearbook from 1981 <laughs> and there's Deborah's picture and there's my picture three uh, pages later but the right. biggest most exciting part was she was actually my teacher for six of our <laughs> six of my classes <laughs> we're like what how is that possible I mean look at you don't even look old enough to be my teacher That's we were it. really really young <laughs> you do yeah we both do so anyway that was kind of a fun thing that happened so um Susan I believe you're in here if you want to go ahead and take a seat one of our other authors 
while she's getting situated here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell my part of the story and why I started this book series. And then we're also gonna talk about, I see there's some other people in here, about how to become a published author. Um, the book series is called Discover Your Eye. Discover Your Eye, as in identity, inspiration, intention, investments. There is a, we're starting a book series called Discover Your Eye Books. The first one was Discover Your Identity, which is what Deborah and I are talking about right now is our individual stories of discovering our personal identities. In a very small nutshell, um, I was a teacher. I was a teacher like my dad. I went to school to do that. I ended up um, long out of all, a lot of chapters in my life. I ended up marrying a musician and spent 13 years of my life. I gave up my teaching career. I just gave up anything to do with any of my own passions to manage his music career and make him what he wanted to be a rock star. So when the marriage ended after 13 years, um, it ended suddenly, uh, not because of my doing it. Well, it ended up, I guess we won't get into all that, but yeah. um, he left me for my best friend. There you go. So anyway, but it ended up being the best thing that happened to me. But a couple months later, I was in a really horrible car accident where I really shouldn't be standing here today. Um, uh, my little bug convertible saved my life. A big Ford F-250 hit me going about 50 miles an hour and T-boned me right in the driver's side. And I was in the hospital for three weeks. Weeks. And hi, Susan, I'm going to join you. And while I was in the hospital, I I was lying there and hi, Susan. Hi. Um, and so I was lying in the hospital and, you know, just really depressed thinking, you know, what, what am I going to do? I don't have anything anymore. I have no passions, no dreams. My husband left. I was, my whole life was about him. And when I thought that nobody knew me, nobody knew my name, I was just the musician's wife. I woke up and I opened my eyes and there was this room full of people. I can still see them standing there today. There was this huge room full of people in my hospital room. And it just, it was the day that changed my life. I realized they were there for me. They knew who I was and they were there because something about me, I meant something to them. So that was the life changing day of my life. And now I have my own identity. I'm Sue Brooke and I know what I love to do. I love helping people. I love helping people discover their identities and not give up their dream for anyone else. So that is when I wanted to tell my story. I realized that all these other people had just as compelling, amazing stories as I did. So we are doing this awesome book series. So I'm gonna let Susan do a really quick synopsis. I know your story is not short, but <laughs> make them read the whole thing. <laughs> and I'm gonna let Susan share that. And then we're gonna talk about how all of you guys that are listening can be in the next book, which is gonna be Discover Your Inspiration. And I know every person has inspiring stories inside them. So Susan Shepard, welcome. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you joined um, up with me? She's my publisher actually, and um, she has an awesome story well so because, because I wanted, I wanted to, have to have a publishing, have a company. publishing company and because I'm writing a whole bunch of books of my own and um, and then Sue said she wanted to do this discover your eye series so I said okay let's do them with my getting what you want publishing so that's what we did so that's how we got the first book and um, so my story in the first book is it's all about how I became a nurse when I didn't want to be a nurse, basically. I wanted to be an engineer. And, um, and growing up in the 50s, you know, um, I was the oldest of six children, three boys, three girls. And my parents felt that the boys needed to have an education so they could support their families and the girls needed to get married. And so they bought insurance policies on us, $1,000 for the girls and $10,000 for the boys. And when I found that out, I was not happy. I was very, very unhappy. I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to go to college, and it wasn't going to happen. So my big goal was to figure out how could I go to college on $2,000 because that's what I had to go. And my dad said, well, you could be a teacher or a nurse. Well, being a teacher meant I still had to go to college. But being a nurse meant I could go to nursing school. And when if I did a little research, which I did, I found that I could go to a hospital school, which was a three-year program that was affiliated with the university and got college credit for the college courses. And so I went to Northwestern University to Evanston Hospital and three years, year round, room and board, and the education was $2,000. So I did figure out how to go 
to <laughs> college on a uh, $2,000. But um, I didn't really want to be a nurse and I didn't really like nursing school either. So ultimately what happened was um, when I finally graduated, which was um, a, a questionable up until the day of graduation, actually, <laughs> because I was usually in trouble for my mouth and um, um, no, I you know, so. not necessarily agreeing with the way things were going, you know. But anyway, um, I sat down and I said, well, there's certain things that I will not do. I don't care how much they pay me. Um, which is, um, you know, pass out trays of medicines when I don't know the patients, write about people's bowel movements and sleep habits. And, <laughs> you know, uh, I just said, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I figured out that the only two places that I could work, hi, Scott, hi, Scott. was hi, Scott. the operating room or the emergency room. And in the operating room, everybody was unconscious. So the patients were all unconscious. <laughs> you didn't get to talk to them. And, so See what I you said, did. <laughs> emergency room, here I come. And on top of it, when I, when I was a student in the emergency room, there was a robbery in the hospital, and um, I was pushing one of the guards that got shot out to um, his family, and I got my picture taken and got my picture on the front page of the Chicago Sun-Times as a student in these horrible uniforms we were wearing in. So I said, okay, well, maybe I could get famous to being an ER nurse anyway. So that's how I became an ER nurse. And ultimately then, you know, what I did was save people's lives and I saved people's lives for 40 years as an ER nurse. Um, I actually did like it. I liked the chaos and the confusion and the and the unpredictability of it. And so I stayed in the emergency room for 40 years. And then I transitioned into um, saving people's lives a different way. So what I do now is I coach people with broken hearts and help them find love. And um, getting what you want is the name of my company. And that's what I do. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell, really a short version. <laughs> Very good, Susan. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to get into what we do in our businesses too in a few minutes. <laughs> But we just had Scott Transu join us. Hi, Scott. One of the two, two guys in our book. We're so excited. And Scott has an awesome story. Love his story in the book. Um, I, I just have to mention that when he first sent his first draft to us, it was kind of short and kind of just, it wasn't, he didn't really get into the guts of his story. And so we said, come on, Scott, give us some more. And oh my gosh, did he. And your story is so compelling and you're doing so awesome in your life right now. So if you want to give us a quick uh, synopsis of your story and why you decided to be in the book, um, that'd be great. Okay, we have four hours, yeah. right? No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, Scott likes to talk about as much as Susan does. So. Yeah. You, you never tell a paid speaker they have all the time they want. That's one lesson. Okay. Anyways, my background, and I'll, I'll try to condense this because we have a lot of other authors on here that uh, deserve time as well. But to make the long story short, I grew up in a extremely dysfunctional environment. Uh, alcoholism, uh, some street drug use, and uh, it was stressful. It was stressful. Um, you can just imagine how stressful it might have been. And I never really knew from night to night how the house was going to be. And when you're seven or eight or nine years old and you don't know what you're kind of going to be exposed to after dinner, you know, it's not exactly a positive place to be. If I do have anything else, I'd be happy to get And uh, essentially what happened was I, I, I like to talk about this all the time. I follow the three rules that you learn in that kind of an environment. You don't talk about it. Because you don't think anybody cares anyway. You learn not to trust people because trusting people is dangerous because it makes you vulnerable. And being vulnerable is a very scary place to be in that case. And you certainly don't feel anything. You don't let yourself feel because if you feel, then you have to express it. And you're expressing it to people who, because of the, the state they're in, really don't want to hear it. I mean, it's the bottom line. They may, tr they may want to care. They may feel like in their own minds they're caring. But the bottom line is that you don't feel that way. And I, I spent probably 18, 20 years in that environment. And the result of it was a whole series of uh, really bad relationships, one divorce and so forth and so on. And when I first uh, 
got wind of this book, what had happened was I had been in the career world for a while and I, <laughs> I made a, a discovery that I thought at the time was kind of negative and other people thought was kind of negative. But now that I look back on it, it turned out to be a complete asset to me. And that was the fact that I was not a good employee. I did not like having to answer to somebody. And it just reminded me of my family too much and do this, don't do that. Don't look at me that way. You know, sit down, do your job, be quiet and go home at five. And it just reminded me so much of my upbringing that I was like, I don't want to do this. So in a lot of ways, I, I guess I kind of sabotaged that avenue for myself. So uh, I had come off a layoff. Uh, believe it or not, you can be laid off in the civil <laughs> service. I figured that out. That's hard to do, but it can be done because I've proven it. Wow. So I got laid off from a state government job, which thank you, by the way. Thank you. Appreciate it. You did me a great favor. <laughs> Anybody who's watching who remembers, you did me a great job. Awesome. And I mean that. I mean that. What happened was I, uh, I did all I did. Any, the only thing I could do, and that was to sort of turn my upbringing and the stuff that I had gone through and everything else into the old saying, you turn lemons into lemonade. And I went out and got a couple of licenses career wise so that I could be on my own if I wanted to, or I could work for somebody else if I wanted to, I had the freedom. And about, I, I spent five years in the tax business working for somebody else, working for a franchise. Uh, I won't mention the name, but you can, there's only a few of them out there. You can figure out which one probably. And uh, during that time I got my license to the IRS so that I could represent people that way. And I represent disability claims as well. And as a fluke, a LinkedIn contact that I found, I wound up getting a speaking contract with a, with a seminar company that uh, another friend of ours, colleague of ours, Maurice Domino, was part of as well. And uh, bottom line is that uh, the last year has been unlike anything I've ever experienced before. Uh, I've, I've been to 25 states doing seminars. I'm, I'm in this book. I co-authored another book with somebody off LinkedIn about uh, healthcare costs and how to save money on taxes that way. And uh, I, 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 I can only imagine what the next few years are going to be like. Uh, much thanks to all of you and to the rest of it, to the rest of our mastermind group uh, that we have. And uh, it's just been awesome. And I'm, I'm tickled pink. Oh, you're just so great, Scott. I love your story. And it's just so inspiring that, you know, you can grow up in those kind of situations and then turn out and just be like, people really want to listen to you and really want to hear what you have to say. And I'm so happy that you're in the book. So super excited. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about our next book, which is Discover Your Inspiration. And, you know, when I got you three, um, three of the 15 authors are sitting here into the discover your identity book. Um, I just want all the books to be inspiring. And so we are doing our next book, which is discover your inspiration and really want to find some people to be in the next book. I mean, let me show you identity. Here's the one that we just did discover your identity that we're in. <laughs> Is your no, oh, you going to? <laughs> so you can find out all about you can submit your stories if you're watching right now to discoveryouribooks.com discoveryouribooks.com please go there and, and submit your story um do you, any of you have any suggestions for anybody um that would like to be in a book like this and how maybe just how it made you feel. I guess I talked to Susan or uh, Deborah on how it made her feel to write the book. Either of you guys want to talk about what it did for you personally to get your story out and actually put it out for the whole world to hear. Scott, probably the best therapy I've ever gone through. Yeah. Wow. There you go. That's amazing. Susan, I know you're you're a big storyteller in it in and of itself, but it's pretty. <laughs> do you have anything to say about that topic? Uh oh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Probably what it did for me was to um, to clarify a little bit my identity. You know. Oh, we lost her. Can you guys see her anymore? 
Just her. Okay. No, just the, I guess she lost her I, thing. Well, while we're waiting for her to come back, um, Scott, while you're, uh, well, let's go to Deborah because we kind of skipped around a little bit. Deborah, can you tell us a little about your business and how to reach you and what you do and how anybody can find out more about you? Yes, Sue, thanks. Yes, um, so the company name is My Coach Deborah, and you can visit my website at mycoachdebra.com. And as I mentioned earlier, I use the metaphor, get off the sidelines and into the game. And I do have a book by that title, get off the sidelines and into the game. And that can be purchased either through Amazon or through um, my, my uh, personal website or my business website also. So yeah, I work as a professional coach and a speaker and facilitating masterminds and the like, and I'm just supporting small business owners and entrepreneurs you know, it's, it's a difficult time for many of them right now. And I think they have challenges, not only physically, but also emotionally, mentally, and ultimately spiritually. Also, they have a dream and a vision. They have worked hard. They've invested a lot of time and oftentimes a lot of money and they can get stuck. They can get scared. So just working with clients to help them get beyond that, never to give up. But to get, you know, I don't want the, I don't want people to be a spectator in their own game, I, you know, and we don't want to just get off the sideline. We want to be in the game and, and raise our level of play. So that's really important and very, very passionate to me. And I love working with people. That's great. That. Yeah. you, um, Deborah, if you don't know, is a huge football fan. <laughs> Huge, huge, huge. And yes, uh, so yes. that's, uh, it's really cool that you put your passion into what you're doing. I think that's really amazing. And I'm kind of doing that thing, but the same thing with the rock star theme as well. My story's called rock star. So really cool. Um, are you still working yeah. with any uh, special ed type um, clients? You know, I am. That is one of my niches. I'm also um, just, this is new to share with you too. I am going to be, I am back in the university setting again, and that will be part-time adjunct, but I'm teaching in a business and leadership program in adult learning. And also I'm actually sharing that co-teaching with my husband, John. So right now we have a strategic management course and there's some others uh, in the near future. And then in January, I'll be teaching at the university level in some special wow. education courses. But um, I also do coaching and advocacy and consulting with special needs students wow. and also their families. So if a student is middle school and older, I can do coaching with them. Otherwise, it would be integrated with the family and helping them in any way and supporting them in any way that they need. That's a large part of my background in training, having spent 34 years in special education administration. So that is is by far one of my, my one of my best niches. And oh, I that's a big that need. It's awesome. Very cool. And Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about your business and how to reach you and what you do? Scott? Yep. You're talking to me? Oh, hello. <laughs> You're talking hello, to me, Scott. Scott. What you do and what's your, just whatever you want to Well, reaching me is pretty simple. You see right up here. <laughs> That's my uh, Twitter uh, handle, st 4 Press. I've been using that for I don't know how long, so I figured what the heck I'd use it on Twitter as well. Uh, my website, which is right now under development, uh, if you go there, it'll say under construction. There might be a way to reach me through there right now, but it's coming up in the next week and a half, two weeks or so. It's it's my name.com, www.scotttransu.com. And that's going to be up and running in the next couple of weeks uh, and so forth. And you can reach me there on Periscope. If, and I know that a lot of people are on Periscope. I am Speaker Scott. And simple as that. If you want to connect with me that way, you're more than welcome to. And I'll be scoping and stuff. Uh, more and more in the next few weeks. But uh, my main niches are taxes and small business owners. I do, I think I told Deborah at one point, I do disability representation as well. Right. As people, SSI, SSDI. Right. I do a lot of work with uh, people filing taxes, whether it's individual or small business owners. And uh, of course the speaking, which I, I it's my first love. And I, I've been, I was doing it for about nine years for free through Toastmasters. And then, uh, Wound up almost in spite of myself getting into the paid circuit. So that's been exciting. So, so can you talk? Uh, that's how to reach me. And we'd lo I'd love to talk to anybody who'd love to talk what to me. What type of speaking is your favorite kind of crowds to speak to? Or what kind of topics is your favorite thing to talk about? 
I am more of what we would call the hard skills, which means I am not probably your keynote on team building or motivation. I can, I can do it, but it's unlikely that I would do an awful lot of that. What I do mostly is the seminar format, and I, in the next year or so, I'm going to be doing more in the breakout session arena. I mentioned it before privately with many of you that uh, I had a contract with a group and uh, we had to postpone it because the organizer unfortunately had a accident and is recuperating. So hopefully that uh, comes back online next year and that's going to be a whole bunch of different cities. And there's a lot to that. There's a couple of book things through it and there's a couple of uh, actually TV shows that are going to be uh, developed for outlets like Apple TV and so forth. So it's, it's a big deal. And I, okay. once I, once things get more finalized and uh, I can announce, more, <laughs> I will. So, but it's, it's going to be an interesting next uh, 12 to 18 months to say the Great, least. Great, Scott. Awesome. And it's like, Susan, glad you found your way back to us. <laughs> That's my computer with battery <laughs> going dead um, without warning. Uh -oh. So why don't you tell us how to reach you, what you do, and what your forte is. You have a lot of things, but let's talk about, um, yeah, you're going to be the head of the Discover Your Intimacy book. So let's talk about why you're going to be uh, the head of that one because and what you do and how to okay, reach you. Okay, so my company is called Getting What You Want, and what I do is I work with, with single people who've had their hearts wounded or broken and are scared to try again. And um, I basically will guarantee them a love relationship within a year if they do follow the system that I developed over the past 25 years of doing this kind of coaching. And um, it's, um, it's very gratifying work. Um, I actually teach women to own their power because women have the power in relationship. They do the choosing and they do the ending of relationships. And, you know, men are, um, men are, absolutely wonderful creatures who are not really that interested in relationship ex unless unless they want one you know if they want one then it, they just want it to be, be there they don't want to talk about it they don't want to analyze it they don't want to they don't want to uh, they don't want to do much about it except have it <clears throat> is that a thing, Scott? <laughs> i love that we have a, a guy in here right now <laughs> anyway um so the token guy is responding, responding appropriately. That's very good. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Go ahead. Um, I mean, that's really what I do. Um, I've written several books. Um, the first one is How to Get What You Want from Your Man Anytime. It is a relationship book that works for both men and women, but it's marketed to women because women buy those kind of books and men don't. <laughs> the men who read that book, they hide it inside a Playboy magazine. And, um, and then the second book is called Dating After 40, No More Excuses. It's a bunch of um, myths that people believe when they've kind of given up and said, okay, well, I'm over 40. That's it for me. I'm not going to get another relationship. And, and so we just talk about that. It's, it's really just a little mini book. It's only about 30 pages long. And then the third book, which is in, in editing right now, is called um, a Romance Reentry for Those Out of Practice. It's a, it's a workbook. It has steps. And then, of course, there's the Discover Your Identity book. And um, and and then we I also published the calendar, which we're, we'll skip that for right now. But um, we're not going to talk about that right now. But but that's oh, there it is. <laughs> anyway, um, um, so people can reach me by getting going to getting what you want dot com or Susan Shepard dot com. That's S-H-E-P-P-A-R-D dot com. And um, I do some speaking around, um, a little bit of speaking, a little bit of um, seminar stuff, um, a, a lot of coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. I, I like the one-on-one -on -one coaching, especially when people um, make huge progress. And um, it's usually, I think what happens is that I have this system called Love with Class. It stands for, C stands for clarity, what do you really want? L stands for love yourself, and there's a process for doing that. A stands for learn how to ask for what you want. The first S stands for success with the three essential ingredients of a relationship, which are chemistry, compatibility, and love with respect. And the last S stands for step up and step out, because if you've done all this work, you're ready to go out and choose who you want. 
and that's how it works with my uh, with my coaching and so that plus the publishing stuff is um taking up a lot of my time and um i'm basically retired you know and <laughs> i work more now that i've been retired than i ever did when i was working so who knows yeah right. absolutely yeah. That's right. So you're going to be doing some blabs pretty soon, right? Yes, for I some am. Singles? We're going to do some getting what you want blabs. Um, I think the first one will probably be that um, dating after 40, no more excuses. We'll talk about that. And then the second one may be, uh, you know, how do you find the, the person of your dreams? How do you find that person? And then we'll go from there and just see what develops and do some of these blabs. Right. Uh, some of some of my uh, former clients are gonna jump on and, and give you some information about how it worked for them and um, and just some people that know what I do will jump on and have comments. So awesome. that's Yay. what we're gonna do next. Very cool. Okay, so um, just to reach uh, me real quick, I, I'm doing, uh, I love, my favorite thing in the whole world to do is to, come up with ideas just I feel I call myself the idea innovator so uh, I love talking to people about their businesses how to be unique and how, how to stand out from the crowd in fact at 3 30 today I'm doing a blab I hope you guys will join me on how to make your business stand out and uh, be different and unique and how to market your business outside the box so I'm Sue Brooke it's S-U-E-B-R-O-O-K-E dot -E com or discoveryoureye.com. Again, the book series is discoveryoureyebooks.com. Please join us and please submit your stories. We really want to get some authors and have a book done in the next couple of months, but we need authors, so I hope you can help us out with that. Um, any other things you guys want to say or talk about? Bring up? Nope. I want to know if Scott's going to be in the intimacy book. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Okay. You end with that. Hey, you know, I, I think should, why not? I, I also no, not? have an idea that we should do an infidelity book for people who've had uh, um, bad experiences and grown from them and then had better experiences after that. Oh, I okay. Good thing, good thing you clarified yes. that. A little yes. Bit. Well, that's what it's about. You know, it's about how you can grow from having a bad experience. <clears throat> Oh, I, that's, that's Which, mine. My story is exactly that. I had the greatest marriage, all of those things. There was infidelity involved, but if it hadn't happened, I, I wouldn't have my identity now. I wouldn't be where I was going to be, and it helped me. And I actually connected last year with my ex-husband, who I hadn't talked to, and he's uh, divorcing the woman he left me for. And he actually, um, we had great, great conversations about how what what happened and what we each did and how we were both um, responsible for what happened and it all happened for the right reasons. So I have the perfect story for, for that book. Uh, good. Good. Anyway, well, thanks you guys for being here. I'm going to stop the recording and hope you will all join us again at discoveryourbooks.com. If you guys want to stick around a minute and to chat for a minute before we hang up, I'm just going to